Hi everybody and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland's latest webinar for this week um, and today we're going to be talking to Brian Mullins from is it Brian Mullins Insurance Brokers, I got the name right? Yes, that's, yeah. that's us, yeah. yeah. Um, and thank you for joining us today Brian and welcome. And Thanks very much, you're, going, you're going to be addressing um, all the topics that I suppose a lot of people uh, with their own salons and stuff are wondering about um, and don't have the expert knowledge that you have. So uh, the topic is insurance issues to consider when reopening your salon. So I suppose we've dealt with, as you were saying to me earlier, we've kind of gotten through the, the COVID-19 part where people were wondering about you know, did they have insurance cover for, you know, when they were forced to shut down and stuff. And now we're moving into the reopening phase, fingers crossed, <laughs> that we are, everything goes according to plan. So, um, and I think everybody at this point as well is aware of the government's back to work safety protocols, um, which as I said to you earlier, is quite broad and doesn't deal with specific, you know, areas. So everybody has to tailor it. So will those, what I wanted to ask was, will those um, new guidelines, health and safety, affect a person's uh, insurance cover, a person with a salon? Uh, yeah, good morning, uh, or good afternoon as it is now. <laughs> yeah, um, many thanks for the invitation, first off. Um, so right. yeah, I think the COVID response plan is essential to all of our businesses reopening. Um, and we have to be mindful of that, that we're following the protocols that we take on board, uh, and they are protocols, so that they're not specific to each business or type of sector, um, they're very much open to our interpretation as to how we uh, would put these plans in place. Uh, but at a minimum, uh, we do have to have a COVID response plan uh, and we need to be mindful that we do this correctly. Um, a lot of the experts are saying it's more dangerous when we reopen than when it is when we shut down. Um, so we need to draw up your response plan, get your COVID response representative in the office or in your salon or your business, your spa. Um, make sure that there's somebody who is appointed as the go-to person for that. Um, then implement the full return to work steps. So you, you need to have, how are we going to do this safely from a COVID perspective? Um, and then you need to have in place the minimized exposures within your own business, whatever type of business that may be. Um, and I say that, I know we're all aware of COVID and we're aware of the back to work protocols. But from an insurance perspective, your liability cover for your public liability, your employer's liability, it will all hinge on your protocols being in place. Because the protocols are government directive and are a national directive, um, we need to adhere to those. So the insurance policy can't be seen to cover in the absence of those protocols being in place. So it's important that people, uh, our businesses, um, do what we can so it's do what you can um, and once you show that you've taken every step to eliminate the risks or as many risks as we possibly can um, then your insurance policy will be okay and we'll be there to meet hopefully claims okay and just you know the the in the protocol it says that like every business has to have a covid response plan devised you know just for anybody listening there um like to do that, do you, do you need guidance from somebody or can you just put it together yourself? Or is there like a template, you know, cause it's so yeah. kind of like put it in place, but no one, no one is explaining how you do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of cutting and pasting going on. There's plenty of yeah. plagiarism going on. Um, we're all uh, trying to find out as much information as we can. Yes. We have the business, uh, the government uh, response, but um, how, do, how do we, interpret that for our own business. How do we put that in our head of paper in real terms? Uh, you, you just have to get as much information as you can, um, put it together. Um, it's a bit like this health and safety statement. So the health and safety statement is a requirement of the Health and Safety Act that every business, be it one employee or 200 employees, has a health and safety statement. So that requirement is there and this is the exact same. Um, whether it's written on the back of a receipt or whether it's a 400 page document, um, it's still a plan. Um, your COVID response plan is the same. It's how you interpret the plan uh, and how you can uh, put that together that makes sense for your business. You know, there's no point if you are uh, a salon of three, uh, there's no point in having 
departments and departments of departments and, and this reports that you know uh, it has to be realistic to your business and reflect how your business runs itself um, and um, you know there, there certainly are um, documents that are available uh, and I have absolutely no problems in sharing our own uh, COVID response plan that, that um, I have prepared with our uh, COVID response uh, person here in the office. Um, so uh, absolutely we can share that as a starting point for anybody but please be aware that we're, you know, it's not a definitive, it's only my interpretation or our interpretation of it but yeah. Um, it, it's cut and paste, I think is the cut name of the game. Paste, yeah. And I guess it's, it's probably a little bit the same with, um, you know, that everybody has to appoint, I think it's called in the, in the protocol, a lead work representative. But the person that, that gets, <laughs> gets to be the lead work representative, are they almost doing a crash course in becoming a lead work representative? Uh, very much so. Um, yeah. And it's also a requirement that they're trained um, okay. So they, they, they have to be trained. Um, I probably mentioned there that the, the LEO uh, and the Chamber of Commerce uh, offices around the country, um, they are hosting webinars and training courses for uh, COVID representatives. Um, so it's a good idea to engage with your local Chamber of Commerce or your LEO office. Um, they have the specific training for COVID representatives. And okay. then you, and you also have to have a, a training course available. Sorry, Karina, you have to have a training course available for all of your employees as well, um, so that they are aware of the protocols when they return to work. Okay. And does the person that gets to be the lead work representative, um, do they get some sort of certification that they've done that course? Is it that, you know? I, 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 would, I would imagine so, that they're going to have to be uh, something to show that they've completed it. Um, yeah. So there, there, there definitely will be some documentation or some proof, um, be it by PDF or an email or whichever way. Um, and they're all online now, of course. So um, yeah, there, there's going to be some documentation um, that will have to be maintained with the rest of your company records. Yeah, I suppose it's just um, again, it's back to that thing of like we're we're in such an area of the unknown because we've never done this before. Yeah. So everybody's <laughs> probably in the same, slightly in the same boat as in everybody's yeah. approaching this reopening with the same kind of like, oh God, how do we do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, you don't want to use the word strange because we're hearing it every day of the week, yeah. uh, you know, um, but yeah, we're all mad to get going. Everybody's like spinning the wheels. When can we start? How can we start? You know, and it's going to be throw open the doors, put the lights on uh, uh, and everybody back in. But that's probably not the way it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, it, it's going to be, slowly uh, and let's open safely. Um, I think it's going to be, it's not going to be, you know, a queue at the door at four o'clock in the morning waiting to get in. No. <laughs> um, you know, um, probably, hopefully not, but that, that's, uh, so yeah, we, we, we just have to be mindful how we do reopen. Um, uh, and I think if we do it slowly, um, there's going to be plenty of help. And just, uh, as we get into, like next Monday is stage two, uh, as we get into stage two, there's going to be more information coming out uh, or more yeah. information available online. Uh, you know, as we move forward through this, um, there's going to be more and more help. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think we just need to soak all that up as much as we can. Yeah, as we're all getting to grips with it. Yeah. Uh, so will we move on now to um, the expert advice around where your policy will stand? Yeah. Um, I would think I was asking you about you know, your existing policy or your last policy. Now, I know I have said to you as well that like, what if your policy had expired and it was up for renewal? So I suppose, where, where does the person stand in, in all of that? Yeah, oh, okay. Um, so since the 16th, of, well, 14th or the 16th of March, what we've seen here in our office, uh, and we do an awful lot of uh, malpractice for the beauty, holistic uh, and spa sections in the industry and hair. Um, and what we've seen is any policy that kind of fell due for renewal since the 14th of March or 16th of March, because the doors were closed, they probably and rightly taken the decision to cut the costs and, and haven't renewed. So those, yeah. those policies are all lapsed, they're cancelled uh, at the moment uh, and are waiting to re-engage when we know a, a, an opening date. So at the moment, it's provisionally the 20th of July and let's hope it's going to be sooner. Let's hope it's brought forward. Uh, and yeah. certainly let's hope it's not going to be pushed back. But if we take the 20th of July just as the only known date at the minute, um, so the policies will have 
cancelled or may not have been renewed since the 14th of March or the 16th of March until the 20th of July. When you get back into business uh, and you're starting to engage with your insurance providers again, uh, you need to do that sooner rather than later. You need to, don't wait until the 19th of July uh, or the 20th of July and say, okay, I'm open, uh, start off my policy. It's not going to be as straightforward as that. You need to re-engage, I would say, um, now, <laughs> now uh, you know, get your quote here. Any quotation is going to last for 30 days. So use the full 30 days, get, get everything in order, make sure that you have the right business activities um, listed on your policy because in truth, we're probably not going to be ended up doing the same business that we were doing back in November or January. Um, some of our treatments that we were providing, we're not going to be providing those ones going forward, well, at least not at the start. So do we change the cover under our policy? Do we change the therapists that were covered under our policy? You know, how do we see ourselves going forward? It's almost like a new business plan uh, and you engage with that. Uh, and get your quotations now so that you're up and ready. You need to then look at your last policy. So when your policy cancelled or elapsed, or if it was a policy that's now dormant, um, you need to go back and make sure what basis that policy was on. Um, and there's two different ways of malpractice policies were done. It's on a claims made or a losses occurring basis. And I know they're very technical and they're not words that you're going to be used to and you won't see it on your policy schedule. You're going to need to uh, ask your insurance provider, what basis is my policy on? Or was it on? Um, because it's very important from going forward from the 20th of July on that if your policy was on a claims made basis that, that you're picking up the cover that was previously in place because any losses that have occurred say two years ago or a year ago you need to make sure that they're still covered going forward because on a claims made policy if you stop it any historical cover is gone so it's very important that if it's on a claims made basis you get in place what's called retroactive cover uh, which then picks up all of the previous activities that you were doing since you started um, and you bring them forward from the 20th of July on. So that's one of the most important things. Make sure that you have your cover in place for all your previous activities. Because as we know, uh, claims can take up to two years to come in. Um, so uh, you need to make sure that, that it's on the right basis going forward. Okay, yeah, so I haven't really thought factored that in historically claims. Yes, yeah, because um, like in the case of, um, in most cases, it will be two years uh, for personal injury or two years from the 18th, 18th birthday. So, you know, uh, God forbid, if there was a child being treated, if, uh, you know, uh, for whatever, um, uh, or an under 16 or under 18, um, it's two years from their 18th birthday. So, you know, it could be a four-year-old child and you still have to cover those claims Okay. For, for the next 16 years because it'll be 14 years till they're 18 and then two years after that. Um, so you need to make sure you have all that historical cover in place. Okay. So it probably wouldn't have... Do you think that that was quite common like if somebody had their insurance was up for renewal that they didn't bother to renew it while... Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that. in the current environment looking at our book uh, and what we've seen the practice was cut costs. You know, uh, you have people stopping direct debits for everything, for, for their electricity, for their water, for, for yeah. all sorts of things. You know, uh, rent wasn't being paid. You know, there was a, there was a kind of a, a position taken, well, you know, I'm going to stop everything and then see how I am come the 20th of July uh, and preserve cash flow as much as possible, which is like when we're all businesses and that's a position we probably had to take. But now we need to look at what were the implications of doing that. Uh, and that's why we need to take it just a little look backwards, see what we had uh, before we move forward in the 20 line. And that's why it's crucial to engage early uh, with the insurance. You know, and, yeah, and so not leave it to the last day, you know. Yeah, it sounds like that's something that really actually does need to be looked at now because we're already in, in um, what are we, the 4th of June? 4th, 4th of June, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, there's still the ongoing talk around, you know, we might get um, the phase moved, you know, we might, hairdressers and salons might be allowed to move into phase three so people would probably really want to be sitting down and thinking about stuff like insurance. Yeah I think so and, and also bear in mind that as you can see here everybody's working remotely um, yeah. and that, that brings its own challenges so um, you know things are going to be a wee bit slower to re-engage you know so if you're, if you're looking for insurance quotes um, 
you know, you're going to have to give yourself a little, you know, if it took a day before, it might take two days now or it might take three days. So yeah. you, you need to allow uh, for time for these things to restart. Yeah. And I suppose, like, would you agree that out of everything that you need to, to restart, as you said, insurance would be up there at the top of the list because, because of the way everything has changed? I think so. I think so. There's a number of concerns that I would have going forward, um, even as a, as a business owner or, or for our clients. Um, like we all are all aware of the treatment risk and through the activities that were being done, you know, the claims could come in for alleged injuries or, or, or mistreatments. Um, we now have added to that in that, you know, we could be facing into allegations of, I caught COVID at your business or an employee um, alleges that they caught COVID uh, within their workplace. Uh, and then it falls back to, as I was starting at the beginning, um, your COVID plan, you know, can you show that you've done everything um, that you could to minimize the risk? Um, you know, and that's the best defense, uh, but your insurance company uh, or your insurance policy will be there um, from the liability perspective, so you have your public liability, and then it's very important to make sure that you have employer's liability. A lot of um, malpractice policies were just taken out um, with public liability cover, just covering the person doing the treatments. Um, so as salon owners, as spa owners, as, as uh, you need to make sure that this employer, the correct employer's liability is in place. Uh, there's a difference there as well if you were renting chairs uh, Make sure that you have the correct public liability in place and, and that the, the underwriters are aware that you're renting out a chair um, because the person renting a chair is not an employee nor are they yeah. a member of the public uh, so they, they you know uh, if they if a claim comes in from them you, you kind of there's a risk of falling between two stools so you need to make sure that the, that the policies note your activities correctly uh, and then it will be there to defend you so the, the, the I suppose really it's about having the best description of your activities, the best outline of what you're going to be doing going forward, and then your policy will be there to support you. It's not something that you need to be afraid of or nervous of or think that oh, the, the insurance companies are going to rely on the small print and get out of everything. They're not. Uh, they will be there to defend the claims, um, but we just need to make sure that we have everything in place to allow them to do that. Yeah. So that leads on, I suppose, to the question around, you know, does your cover need to be changed? The cover, I suppose, you already had. Does it need to be updated to, to reflect the, the new working environment? So, you know, the way we, we spoke before, like, about um, when all of this happened. Do you remember I, I was talking to you one day and you were saying that, like, we had never heard of coronavirus. So it was yeah. obviously never going to be in someone's, insurance policy <laughs> yeah, so yeah. now it's all we hear about like does, does existing policies need to be updated or amended to reflect all of that uh, absolutely uh, Karina. yeah absolutely um yeah we, look going back to, to uh, november we might have heard or october we might have heard uh, the first rumblings about a, a, yeah. a, a disease in china I yeah. never thought it was going Very to darken our uh, You know, it, uh, it was dismissed. Uh, um, and, you know, I'm too busy. I can't be dealing with that. Like, you know, and yeah. I'm just uh, next. Uh, and uh, now it's essential to all our lives. But the current policy wordings will cover, well, sorry, I can't give a blanket, yes. But you need to um, be careful when you're reading your policy documents. But the, the most of the liability policies out there will cover COVID from a liability point of view. So this is for claims for negligence against you for personal injuries caused by disease. It's completely different than the situation that we had at the start when everybody was wondering where they covered for uh, interruptions in their income. Um, that wasn't covered because nobody thought of COVID and nobody thought of a disease spreading uh, like this and shutting all of our businesses down. So it just wasn't considered. Uh, yeah. It wasn't written into the policy documents. However, under the liability policy wordings, it, it is there. Um, so the, the, the liability claims will be defended, but my concern would be we go 12 months down the road or we go six months down the road as we get out of this, you may find insurance companies changing their wordings um, to remove COVID as a disease from the liability sections as well. Okay, uh, and 
placing the onus back onto the national government, um, which is pretty much the same way that um, the likes of um, AIDS, when, when AIDS was, was uh, first a concern, um, it was covered under insurance policies. Uh, and then as time grew on, uh, AIDS was the standard exclusion and it still remains a standard exclusion under uh, nearly all liability insurances. Um, so I would see that COVID, given time, um, will become a standard exclusion and it then falls back on the national health system um, and the government to be responsible uh, as to their response to keep this pandemic out of the country rather than the business owner. Okay. Um, I've just spotted there actually while we were chatting, we had two questions coming in. Um, so I might just deal with them now. Um, somebody, Rita, asked, um, I think she was referring back to when I asked you about the, the lead work representative um, needing to do, as I refer to it, as a crash course. Um, yeah. She said, can you please share the name of the online course? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. Um, it is a webinar, so um, I'm not sure if it came from the, uh, we're based in Sligo, so I'm not sure if it's the, uh, the Sligo Chamber of Commerce or whether it was Leo, but uh, as I said, I, I'm sure that all local offices are, are doing the same thing. Um, but uh, absolutely, yeah, we, we make it available. Yeah, uh, and I'll, that, I'll share all this with you, Karina, afterwards. Yeah, uh, is, that, I, I, is that a standard, um, oh, somebody said Waterford Chamber running those courses too. It's, so there's not... Do you think there's an actual standard uniform one or is everybody doing their own one? Um, I would say Chambers Ireland, I would say have got together and it will be doing one nationwide. Okay. Um, you, you are going to get uh, private companies providing these training courses as well. Like, you know, yeah. the, 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 the same people who do the manual lifting, the health and safety training. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sure they're not going to miss a trick and they will have um, COVID training plans for uh, your your lead representative and for your staff as well. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> It'll become big business. <laughs> for the minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I suppose, yeah, we'll just say to Rita that if she looks up her either her local chamber or local enterprise office, yeah. that would be yeah. the first port to call, yeah. And then yeah. Um, a lady called, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, Luana, um, want to know, um, I don't know if this is something I suppose you can answer, what kind of treatments do you think we may not be able to offer? Um, I, I, I don't know if that's my position. Um, obviously, I, I'm insurance. I, yeah. I, I'm not a qualified therapist. Um, yeah. is, that, is that again a kind of, I suppose, uh, an up to the salon type of a, an answer? I, I, I think so. I, I, like, um, uh, I was listening to Anita Murray there uh, with the Irish Spa Association and, and their webinar and, you know, their talk about how to open your business or reopen safely and maybe do some of the uh, less onerous treatments first to re-engage with your clients, to, to uh, have some sort of cash flow coming back through uh, without the up-close uh, and personal facial treatments, I suppose, um, being the most onerous ones um, that... Uh, they may be the ones that we could lead off with. Um, but uh, you then take note that the Irish Dental Association and dental technicians, um, they're back up and running uh, and they're managing to conduct their business safely. Uh, so there is a way. Um, we just have to find a way that suits our business and our activities uh, and to yeah. do that safely. But if, yeah. if in doubt, uh, I would say just start with something else, press pause on that particular treatment until you maybe have seen how it is being done or how the industry uh, reacts to this, to yeah. the opening, and, yeah. and then take it on board. Yeah, but, I, I suppose it's a bit like everything in general with them, um, even with the, the roadmap, it's like baby steps, because you have yeah. to kind of figure out, you know, if I do that, what's going to happen? And then you figure out that, okay, that worked, everybody's safe, we can go on to the next step. Um, yeah. I think we have to be comfortable as business owners. We have to be comfortable for our, our employees, our teams. Uh, and then we also have to be comfortable for our clients. Um, and, you know, if we're slightly nervous about it, you can be sure that they are too. Um, so is that the kind of environment we want to reopen into? We obviously want to instill full confidence and say, yeah, we're good to go. We've put everything in place. We're 100% happy. Um, doors are open. You know? Yeah. And... A lady called Patricia just said, I did not lapse my policy. 
can I have an extension of my policy which is due for renewal in September? Okay, um, this is really down to every underwriter, every insurance company has taken their own position. I, I know with our policies, what we're doing is that uh, any policy that uh, cease trading or they stopped from the 14th of March or 16th of March, uh, uh, when they re-engage, we, we will be allowing a discount off the new premium when they re-engage. So th there will be uh, compensation for the downtime uh, that they've suffered a loss. Um, with other insurance companies, it, it really all depends on who they took the policy out with. Um, okay. That, uh, you know, uh, some companies may uh, make a decision uh, to do something. Um, and others I'm aware of, um, they're saying, sorry, no, we're covering past activities, so we're not giving any discount. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't actually really understand what she meant there, but I get it now. I guess she means that um, because she wasn't using insurance. Is that what she means? In the last yeah. three months, yeah. can she get those three months almost added on? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's, the answer would be specific to who her insurance yeah, company is. I guess. A bit like your motor insurance. I know um, there was a big talk there a while back over um, the cars weren't on the road as much. Can I get <laughs> some money back from your insurance company? Uh, yeah. And, uh, some of the companies have come back and said, yeah, they're going to give a token gesture, uh, 30 euro or 40 euro per policy. Yeah. Uh, and some have just said no. Yeah, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, um, so. And I, that actually leads on nicely to the question around cost. Um, I suppose everybody's wondering, you know, I was even talking to somebody yesterday um, who was making the point that, you know, stuff that that is now like in high demand, like like things on sale in, in you know the hardware stores like woodies and paint this person was saying to me that he felt like prices had gone up um because all of a sudden everybody wanted to buy paint and everybody wants to buy garden furniture and for insurance do you think that the and of course because insurance as well it's such a you know god it's like the you know a never-ending area when it comes to covid do you think yeah. that that will be reflected in cost? Will insurance costs go up? I, I don't see, the, not because of demand, like what you've alluded to there. Yeah. No, I don't see that having an impact on the pricing. Um, I, I do think um, as we go into next year, uh, there could be some impact on rates. Um, okay. For a number of reasons. Uh, I, I do think that insurance companies are going to get caught with some amount of claims. Um, I, I do think there's going to be a number of insurers exiting the market. Um, Particularly, we need to be mindful as well that uh, a lot of the Irish businesses um, that we're talking to today uh, would have taken out policies in the UK uh, and we're now running up to the clock as a, uh, sorry, on countdown for Brexit. Um, so come the 31st of December, um, those particular insurance companies are no longer going to be able to write the business that they were writing. Uh, so you have a, a very large chunk of the market going to be exiting, uh, which means then the, the remaining insurers uh, have to pick up those policies, but they also have to pick up the claims. So mm -hmm. you, the, the, the way insurance works, it kind of spreads the losses of loads of people uh, amongst loads of people. Um, once you start reducing the number of insurance companies, they're then going to see more and more losses. And that puts pressure on the rate. Uh, and then you will see rate insurance uh, getting increased. So um, I, I would say that towards the second quarter of next year, uh, I, I would imagine there's going to be some um, rate increase across insurances. And I think that's going to be across everything, be motor, home, business. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be substantial, but I, I do think there's going to be some impact on, on rate next year. Uh, yeah. Hell, no, I don't see any change. Like come the 20th of July, we're still going to be quoting the same premiums we were quoting. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, a little bit like, I, I guess, the whole COVID impact in general. Like, obviously, we're feeling a massive impact now, but you know the way they're saying that, like, even in terms of the recession that we're going to experience, we won't really know for another six months the full force of it. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think... You, you, exactly. Um, like, there's an analogy here. We, we have a front reception counter you can't see here. Um, I, I, we got Perspex priced uh, for that. Um, I, 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 the... the that I came in and he gave me a price and he says, you know, had you bought this pair of specs two months ago, <laughs> um, it, it, it was less than a tenth of the price. So it went up tenfold. Of course. The price yeah. of pair of specs, you know, um, insurance isn't going to do that, but yeah. that's like making hay when the sun shines, really, you know. Yeah, um, it's going to happen, yeah. It, it is going to happen, you know.
Yeah. And I know that you said to me as well, um, other considerations um, to take in, I suppose, within insurance. <laughs> you mentioned, and you mentioned it there a few minutes ago as well, Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Brexit is going to be bigger. all forgotten about. Yeah, and, and that's you know that's the media for you. You know, Brexit. Yeah. Brexit I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the national media. You know, the airwaves. Uh, it, it is. It's under the radar, uh, but it is going to happen. Yeah, and, and it'll have a big impact on, on this sector um, because a lot of Irish risks um, in the malpractice and the hair, the beauty, the spa, um, complementary sectors. They were all insured in the UK or all insured out of Scotland. Um, and now that they're outside of the EU, they don't have the same license to write Irish business. Um, so it needs to be re-engaged uh, within an Irish market. Um, so yeah, uh, another good reason to engage with your insurance providers early um, okay. and not leave it on, until July. Okay, so yeah, we have to all start thinking about Brexit again. And you said about uh, further changes may be introduced by NEFIT to consider that? Yeah, so NEFA, that's the, the, the national uh, physical, uh, the health team that uh, they're going to be coming out. And, and, you know, so we've had some changes already to the protocols. We just have to be mindful that the goalposts may move again. Um, you know, the two metres might go down to one metre, but uh, we could go backwards as they keep telling us. Um, so it's just to be mindful that we have to keep up to date uh, and uh, make sure that we're doing everything we can uh, for the protocols that are in place at the time, you know. Yeah, um, and actually, just to kind of almost like a side question there, you know, the like when you say like that we're doing things as the protocols are in place, have you any idea? Um, in maybe you don't like, are there going to be the people going around checking? No, uh, I, I, well, I don't, maybe I shouldn't be saying no so publicly, but uh, uh, I don't believe so. I think, yeah. Uh, uh, on one of the programs I was watching at the start of all of this, uh, I don't tend to watch too many of them anymore, but at the start there was only 64 yeah. health and safety consultants in the country. Uh, it's not possible that they can go out and check yeah. everything. But um, the way it's going to come out is when the dreaded solicitor's letter comes in and you get these yeah. allegations that ABC alleges they caught COVID um, or they suffered a, an injury as a result of uh, your business activities on your premises that's yeah. the first we know of it um, so then uh, you that's when you're going to have to produce your documentation or provide yeah. Um, yeah. some background well you're not going to you're not going to have to provide your COVID business response plan so just to reassure people um, for an insurance company um, but when when the insurance industry is going out to try and defend you um, and that, that's what they're there, they're there for is to defend you in a court of law for claims of negligence so uh, the immediate reaction usually of the business owner is shock. You know, uh, uh, how could they do this to me? It's all, it becomes very personal. Um, but it, it's not that. It's a, it's a claim of negligence, and it's just the way that the law is wording it. Um, so we do need to be there to respond to that. And the insurance companies, and the, they're, they're doing their best to respond to those claims of negligence. So they will ask in the event that if it is a COVID claim that's been brought against you, they would ask, show us your policies, show us your documentation, show us your training, um, so that we can offer a defense to this claim. Yeah. You know, so we can repudiate it and we can say, look, at th th this business has done absolutely everything they could do uh, and they're not negligent. Um, the, the, Dr. Hulan said yesterday that there's no business is risk-free. We can't eliminate the t this risk entirely from our lives. Yeah. So we just have to reduce it and minimize it to... I suppose what is an acceptable level, and, yeah. and once we've done that as business owners, you know that's that's all that can be expected of us, and that's all we can do. Yeah. And, and once we can show that to the insurance companies, and once we can show that in a court of law, that's the defence. Yeah. But if we haven't done anything, if we've just thrown the doors open, um, then we have no defence. Yeah. The possibility is that the claims will succeed. Yeah. And um, somebody had asked there, and I, I this is you know, again, a question I don't think you can particularly answer, just about taking um, clients' temperatures before treatment. That's something like that will either, you know, come in as, as a, a law almost. I think there was talk of, you know, checking people's temperatures going into big events, that that, that was one way of dealing with keeping a place safe, but in a yeah. salon with clients. Do you see uh, that coming in? 
I, I do, yeah, definitely. Uh, I see it coming back in the in the workplace. Um, I see it uh, becoming um, almost the norm for a while. Um, I don't see it becoming law. Um, okay. I, I do see it becoming um, like, like when a client goes into a salon or a spa um, for a treatment and they, they, they have to fill in their consent form. I see it being formed as part of the question on the consent form. Do you agree to your temperature being taken? You know, uh, and then, so if the person says no, um, the salon owner or the therapist has to make a call on that. that they might as well have asked, do you have any other contagious disease? Yeah. You know, uh, and you kind of say, well, am I happy treating this person? And um, they're yeah. refusing to get their temperature taken. Uh, why? Uh, you know, uh, so they're the questions. But I, I do very much see it being part and parcel of, of the business. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. And I see it. Um, I see contracts of employment changing, so I think we're all going to have to re-examine them. We're going to have to look at our um, health and safety statements um, that are attached to our contracts of employment. Uh, you're going to make, take a look at your sick leave policies, because if somebody contracts the COVID um, or, or is at risk, or mm. you know they, they, they need to self-quarantine for 14 days, how, how do we treat that in our in our employment practices? How do we treat that under our contracts? Um, so th these are all going to have to be re-examined as well. Um, and I do think that temperature controlling or temperature checking will have to form part of that. That Yeah, you're going to have to ask people's permission. Um, you know, can, can, can you do the temperature test? Like, uh, I don't know if you can see that. that that's a new oh, dish yeah. as long as they're here. You know, um, so it, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be everywhere. Um, and I, I, we haven't reopened. I, I, I'm unsure how you could bring that into the business. I'm unsure how you go about um, suggesting, asking. Uh, but these are all HR issues that we're all facing. Um, you know. You know so, but yeah, I do definitely think it's going to become the norm. It's going to become the norm when we travel. It's going to become the norm when we go to venues. When you go to the cinema, I think it's going to become the norm that uh, you, you get temperature check going in. Yeah. yeah, I do. I do think that that is going to happen. You know. I think there's there's a lot of stuff that's going to become the norm that like, you know, last, even say like November, December, we would have been going, what? <laughs> you know, completely couldn't have gotten our heads around that this is going to become our normal, you know? Well, that's it. Who would have thought you'd be putting on gloves and a mask going to Super Value? I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we're actually nearly out of time there. I think I have one or two more questions. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, we'll just go with one more question there. Um, somebody's asking, can she get insurance for visiting clients in her own, in their own home because her business pre premises is currently unavailable to use? Uh, yeah, you can, yeah. Changing uh, her insurance in that sense, is she? Yeah, uh, okay. I, I think this is going to be uh, more common as well, that um, some salons uh, may not reopen, uh, uh, same as any small business, they may not reopen, uh, and people will change the way that they do business, then they may become mobile. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I, I do believe that, uh, I know our policies will cover mobile uh, therapists, um, I, I, and that's going forward. We don't see any change in that. Uh, and we see a lot of people will be um, operating from home. Um, and that brings another consideration. They need to make sure that their, their home insurance policy is mindful of that they're operating a business from the house, that you, you don't just throw open the, the spare room uh, and change it into a salon. Uh, yeah. it, it can have big implications on, on your home insurance. So, you know, uh, we would have a policy for that. But you would need to make sure that I, if you're changing your model, let's examine your policy. If you're changing your model on how you do your business, it, it has to be reflected in your policy. Um, and once you yeah. do that, yeah, you're fine. You could be mobile, you could be renting a chair, you could be operating from home. Be no yeah, issue. but you can't, I guess, what, you know, you can't just assume that, you know, okay, I have insurance um, when I had my salon and now I'm not going into the salon and I'm going to somebody's home. You can't make the assumption that you have the same cover. No, certainly, yeah. certainly. Yeah. It could assumptions, run into all sorts of problems. Yeah, assumptions are the dangerous things. I think we all know that. Yeah, make no yeah. assumptions. Just a quick phone call, a quick email, uh, and it's checked off. Um, yeah. 
especially in, in the insurance industry. Um, okay, I think we're out of time, really. Um, uh, uh, just sorry. That, uh, I know you asked there, but we will make um, any resources that we have available, you know, so the, the, the protocol, um, there's a, a Dr. Godfrey Townsend uh, that we work with, he's a laser protection advisor in the UK. Uh, he's done a lot of work um, in the UK on reopening business and safety and safety protocols, particularly for the uh, more advanced uh, businesses that are using high-tech equipment. Uh, uh, we can share uh, Dr. Townsend's protocols as well on how to do those treatments correctly. Uh, and then uh, uh, just to reference um, Habic, H-A-B-I-C. The, the, yeah, I saw yeah. you'd written that in. The, the, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Well. I, I think it's hugely important that, uh, you know, this industry comes together, and, you know, uh, is involved with its representative body, you know, that, that's there for advice and there to, to um, you know, act on your behalf. Um, so uh, I, I think Habic is going to be central going forward. Uh, yeah. I think the more voices and the more people that get involved, Brilliant, you know, it can't yeah. only be better for us. And they've been very good as well at, at sort of, um, you know, producing guidelines when they're needed. Um, they've become like the, the sort of the go-to place where if you've got certainly. a question about, oh God, what are we going to do next? Yeah, like certainly. They, 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 there's an executive team there uh, and they're putting in tremendous work, really hard. Right, um, yeah. Um, okay. Um, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I knew that, I, I think I said that to you, I knew we'd get lots of questions because insurance is one of those areas that, you know, everybody needs to have it, but uh, most people literally haven't a clue about it, you know, because it's, yeah. it's very complicated to somebody that's not yeah. expert. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's not designed to be complicated, trust yeah. me. It's just a... Uh, a yeah, this the business I fell into. But yeah, if anybody wants to um, contact me um, directly, if you have any questions, we didn't face them today. Uh, even if you're not insured with us, uh, I'm very happy to give any advice that we can. And uh, I don't know if you want to pass on my contact details, Kareem, but please do so. There's, there's yeah, well, you're, no you're, will I direct people to your website? Uh, direct them to the website or, or my email uh, is perfect. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, we will come back to you. Brilliant. Um, okay, so thank you so much again for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll meet in person at some point. We, we will, uh, well, we'll be at the professional beauty show in November. All going well. Yeah. So we'll all uh, meet, many, th we'll many thanks. thanks to yourselves. We'll be yeah. almost back to normal, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to get my hair done for that night. <laughs> okay. Listen. Thank you, Brian, right. and thanks everybody for tuning in. And uh, any questions at all, just get in touch with us, and we will try and forward the queries onto the relevant parties. So, and we will see you all again next week. Okay, Great. thanks, Brian. Thanks very much. Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.